Some people call this summer, but I need more sun in my life. I'm making all Mediterranean food just for that. I've got fougas, which is a bread shaped like a leaf and full of olives, an aubergine dipping sauce with cumin in it and mint, a fennel salad with olives and pine nuts, pork chops with confit of lemon, and an apricot salad with just a little hint of flower water. All sunshiny food for a dull day. C'est pas fini, Pierre. What's it going to be done? It gets cold in the Mediterranean sometimes too. I've been there in winter and it's freezing in Provence. So I think bread baking is the thing to do because even in warm climates, you have a need for bread. Bread's everywhere. So I'm making fougasse, which is a leaf-shaped bread from Provence, a lot like focaccia, and it's got olives in it and rosemary, so sunshiny flavors inside. So, two and a half cups of flour. Right here, I have yeast, which has just been in warm water, just for five minutes. I'm just gonna stir a little bit of this flour into the yeast. Now, salt. Never forget salt in bread, because it tastes like nothing otherwise. I'm putting a teaspoon in. I'll just mix it around. Now, actually, fougasse is quite a lot like pizza dough, but you add eggs to it, so it's richer than that. Pretty much the same thing. It's still quite flat, despite the yeast. Crack in two eggs. And also oil, because that will make it, a little bit of fat gives extra flavor and it kind of makes it, changes the texture a little bit. Two tablespoons of oil. Olive oil, of course. I'm just going to mix this in the well. The eggs and the oil. And then, Put the yeast mixture right in with it. It sort of gets a bit lumpy, but it gets kneaded out in a minute until it's smooth and elasticy. I want a little rosemary. Where are you, rosemary? Okay, that's about a tablespoon. Just put it right into the flour. And about half a cup of chopped green olives. I kind of like having a little bit spread throughout. That way you get some of those perky little olive tastes and rosemary in every single bite. And mix it up so that the dough is quite wet underneath. You just have to work it. So in the bowl at first, and then you can flip it out if you want. So then just set your handsome little bowl of fugas to be and cover it for an hour so that it has time to rise and then it will be nice and high when it's baked, as high as fugaces go. You ready? Yuck. Great! It gets even smoother as it sits. And all the all is nicely distributed. Now you just have to punch it down. Woo! I love hearing the air come out of it. Poof. So then just give it a quick knead. Oh, I just love how bread feels in my hands. You have to make bread with your hands just for that, just for that. Flatten it out, because it's not a bread that rises high in a ball. Again, kind of pizza dough-like, you've got to stretch it. I want it kind of a leaf shape, so I almost need a rolling pin. Now underneath, on the pan, you can put just some cornmeal.
Lay it right on the cornmeal like that. So just stretch it out. There. Only that looks like a tongue, not a leaf. Oh well. It will look like a leaf in a second because I'm going to make little slits in it. There. Charming. I'm just going to let it rise for another 15 minutes just because it has a tendency to go up and then I'll just make sure the holes are nice and wide and bake it. I need the oven at 400 degrees. Now, just to make it nice and shiny on top, a little egg wash, which is just an egg whisked together with water. It needs about half an hour, and it will be nice and high and golden on top. It's just perfect and still shaped like a leaf. Mm. It's amazing how the olive oil taste is so full. Just two tablespoons and it's olive land in your mouth. Next, I'm making vegetable dishes. Mediterranean vegetables, including a grilled fennel salad. You're still in the same spot where I left you. This is making me nervous. No, I see that. Are you hungry? Affamé. Well, I have a little surprise. Attends deux minutes. I'm cooking to feel like I'm in a relaxed mood, puttering around a house on the Riviera, which requires a fantastic imagination, but a fennel bulb also helps. I'm making a grilled fennel salad, and then orange sections and some thin slices of red onion and pine nuts and olives. So first, I'm just gonna cut these fingers off here, but I'm just gonna keep them here on the side. Now, I just want some nice slices, not too thin, just about a centimeter thick. And then, just heat a bit of olive oil. Just using fine salt here, but I'll add a little extra in crunchy form later. Voila. It's all nice and colored and just just soft. You know, it's not cooked to mush, it's just nicely softened. Now, for a little orange, to get the sections out without any of the pith, you work around so that you expose the sections. And then because I want the juice too, you can just cut it right over the salad and let the sections drop in. So you cut between the bits of membrane like that and just lift them out. And then I just squeeze out the last bit right over the fennel. Don't waste any juice. Because the fennel is roasted and it has a bit of sweetness, some red onion is really important. Red onions are also kind of sweet, but they have nice bite. Now, for some black olives, a little bit of a briny note. These are Niçois olives from the south of France, of course. Some toasted pine nuts. That will give nice nutty crunch. And finally, these nice fronds, anise flavored. And I don't chop them too much, just a little bit. I love these recipes that you can just throw together like that, no recipes. Which reminds me that I have eggplants. And with eggplants, there's another recipe you can make that's just kind of hurled together without looking at anything, and it's called eggplant caviar, which is a fancy way of saying mushy eggplant, really, with other flavorings. 
I just have the oven on at 375 because these need to be nice and soft. Just a tiny bit of oil on each one. Voila. They really are so spectacular. If I could have them pierced, I'd wear them. Reminds me of these tiny eggplants I saw in France. They look just like eggs. This isn't, uh, it's not an heirloom vegetable, but I was fascinated to see it. These are eggplants. And they do look like little eggs, don't they? Very cute. Yeah, these are white ones. And there was a pretty purple one I saw a little while ago. Where did that go? Beautiful. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Oh, I love these. Now for my eggplant. So the flesh now, you can see, is just applesauce soft. Just mash the flesh like this. A little garlic. Now, apart from garlic, the other classic ingredient is cumin. And the other thing I add is mint. This is not traditional, but I do like to add a little red pepper just because it is so pretty. Spoiling my appetite. Mm. It's really good on fugas. There's just the right amount of cumin. It's very rich and spicy, but not too overwhelming. And then just a little garlicky warmth in the background. Next, a pork chop with preserved lemons. Pierre! Pierre? How is it? Delicious. C'est bien? Delicious. Well, I'm making you something even better in a second. It's a bit of a dreary day, so I'm making all cheerful Mediterranean food. I have a pork chop next with preserved lemon, and I think the most cheerful garnish it can possibly have is a lovely branch of cherry tomatoes. I have the oven on at 400, and they just need a dribble of olive oil, and if I roast them for half an hour, they'll collapse right on the vine. Those will be done by the time the pork chop's ready for them. And one of the star ingredients in the pork chop is preserved lemon. These I just bought because I didn't have any made. Normally I use normal lemons and you just make a salt brine. You put them in coarse salt and slit them open. That's the way they are in France too. These are baby baby though. Baby baby. Anyway, the interesting thing about them is that you only eat the skins because in the salt brine the skins almost, they sort of cook. And so they're very soft, and that's the part you eat, not actually the fleshy bit. So you just cut out the flesh. I love the taste of it. It's salty, citrony, but tastes completely different from fresh lemon. Now my pork chops. Nice, juicy, fat ones. Look at this day. Blech. Just gets worse and worse. I love a nice juicy pork chop with lots of fat. So, I'm just heating my pan with a bit of oil, despite the fat, just so it doesn't stick. And then, seasoning them with salt and pepper and sugar, which is a trick that a chef taught me. And you just use sugar, like salt, a tiny bit, and it just helps caramelize them even more. Just a little salt on the other side. I'm just browning them at this point, not cooking them all the way through, just giving them color on both sides. Once it's nice and golden, you can flip it over.
So the next thing, a cup, three quarters of a cup of white wine, just to deglaze. A handful of olives. And maybe half this lemon. If I add it all, it will lose some of the perkiness. So I add half now and half later. And that needs just about 10 minutes covered to finish. It reminds me a bit of tagines, the tagines I had in North Africa and Morocco. And for tagines, they use terracotta. I don't know why I didn't use this. I love terracotta. It means cooked earth or terre cuite. And actually, if you get really good quality stuff, you can cook with it on the burner. In fact, my Moroccan friends say, you, it's horrible to cook anything in metal because it changes the taste of food. They prefer everything cooked in this nice earthenware. They're so pretty too, very Mediterranean. This should be good. As soon as they're tender, and you just have to kind of cut in to have a look, right by the bone, and they're good for me. I'm just letting these juices boil down a little bit more around, and I'm going to add the rest of the lemon just now at the last minute. I think the olives are good. Maybe I'll chop some parsley too. A nice plate for Pierre. And some of these nice juices poured over with lemon and olives. To make it especially pretty, the tomato branch, which is just cooked down so that the tomatoes just wrinkle and slump, but they're still on the branch, so isn't that pretty? Youch! Look how beautiful, a big fat chop with preserved lemon and lots of green olives and this pretty branch of tomatoes. Pierre is going to love it. I give you wine, but I don't want you falling off your ladder. Yeah, no accidents on the job. I'm making one more thing, an apricot salad, which is very Mediterranean because it has pistachios and orange flower water. Now, for a sunshiny Mediterranean salad, of peaches and apricots. Woo. I've got this big pot of boiling water because the first thing I'm going to do is blanch the peaches and the apricots because I want to take the skin off. So you make a little crisscross in the bottom of the fruit. It's really just a matter of seconds. You start to see the skin pulling off all by itself. And into an ice bath. For the apricots, I think I'll use six. They're so nice and fuzzy. Plunge. In they go. See how bright and orange they are? Okay, now for a little syrup just because they need a little sweetness around them. Some sugar, two tablespoons of sugar into a saucepan, and two tablespoons of honey. And half a cup of water. And this will make a lovely sweet syrup. So now that these have been blanched, the skin comes right off. And look at the color, it's just blushing underneath. So to go on the salad, I have some pistachios which match the apricots, geographically speaking. And they look great on it because there's that bright, lovely green, jade-like. And I want to see it, that's why you've got to chop in. Now, the final ingredient, just to make it a little exotic, is orange flower water. And you have to be very careful when you're adding it, just a few drops, just to scent it. You can just 
let it cool a bit if you want, or if you're impatient, like I am, you just spoon it over the fruit. It makes it glisten. And then, just scatter the pistachios over top. And you have a very simple, sunshiny dessert that looks great and will taste great. And just a little slump of creme fraiche on the side. And that's a beautiful little summertime dessert. So even if it's not sunny outside, it's sunny on your plate. That's what's great about Mediterranean food. A chewy leaf-shaped fougas bread with lots of rosemary and green olives. A colorful roasted fennel salad with crunchy pine nuts and juicy oranges. A smooth aubergine puree with cumin and garlic. Pork chops with olives and preserved lemons garnished with a pretty roasted branch of baby tomatoes. And an apricot and peach salad accessorized with pistachios and a perfumey splash of orange flower water. A whole Mediterranean menu with a northern view. Yeah.